Archimedes of Syracuse, Greek mathematician, physicist, engineer, inventor, and astronomer. This is his life. Archimedes was born in the city of Circus on the island of Cilicia in 287 BC. He was the son of an astronomer mathematician named Phidias. Aside from that, very little no is known about the early life of Archimedes or his family. Some maintain that he belonged to the nobility of Circus, and that his family was in some way related to that of Herod II, king of Circus. But that is unknown. In the 3rd century BC, Circus was the hub of commerce, art, and science. As a youth in Circus, Archimedes developed his natural curiosity and penchant for problem solving. When he learned as much as he could from his teachers, Archimedes traveled to Egypt in order to study in Alexandria, founded by Alexander the Great in 331 BC. Alexandria had, by Archimedes' time, earned a reputation for great learning and scholarship. After his studies in Alexandria, Archimedes returned to Circus and pursued a life of thought and invention. He spent most of his time helping defend Syracuse in a losing war against the Romans, where he built such things such as a claw, which was a sort of crane equipped with a grappling hook that was able to lift attacking ships partly out of the water, then neither cause the ship to capsize or suddenly drop. He also spent his time helping the king with his own personal needs. This is how he invented the Archimedes screw and discovered Archimedes' principle. The Archimedes Screw the king wanted to design a boat for himself. It had to be huge. He wanted to have everything he could in there. A gym, a spa, everything. But there was a problem. The boat was too big and water kept on getting in. They had to find a way to get the water out quickly. So the king went off to find Archimedes. And when Archimedes returned, he returned with the Archimedes screw also known as the screw pump. The screw pump would be churned by manual labor, and as the shaft turned, the bottom end would scoop up water. Then the water will slide up into the spiral tube until it finally poured out at the top. Archimedes Principle the king wanted a new crown, so he gave a bar of gold to the blacksmith. But when the blacksmith came back, the king wasn't sure that the blacksmith had used all the gold, or if he had substituted the gold for something cheaper like silver, and kept the rest of the gold for himself. So the king went off to find Archimedes, for he had no proof that the blacksmith had substituted some gold for silver. Archimedes spend a long time on this he had no idea how to prove it but finally it came to him on the bathtub as soon as he got in water would splash out of the bathtub and the more he stepped in the more water came out at the time archimedes had known that gold was denser silver so if a certain weight of silver had been substituted for the same weight of gold the crown would occupy a larger space than an identical one of pure gold when he figured this out, he ran out into the street snake, it, screaming out, Eureka! I have found it! So Archimedes put it to the test. He got two large cups with the water filled up just before the brim. One of them, he put the gold bar in, and he measured how much water came out. The other one, he put the gold crown in and measured how much water came out. But he noticed that more water came out on the gold crown. That's how Archimedes' principle came to be. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced water. Archimedes as a Mathematician Archimedes was a great inventor, but he was also known as the greatest mathematician of his time. Some of his greatest involvements include finding a really close estimate to pi. This is how he did it. He drew a circle, then he drew a regular polygon outside the circle, so that the sides of it would touch the circle. He then drew another polygon, but instead of outside, he drew it on the inside. So at the vertices of the of the of the polygon 
would touch the sides of the circle. And then he just kept on narrowing down his answers by drawing more sides on each of the polygons. He kept on doing this until eventually his answer got exhausted and he came up with a really close estimate. His estimate was that pi would be somewhere between 3 and 1 7th to 3 and 10 71th. Some of Archimedes' most proudest work was in something called the 44 Statements. This mostly included math, including uh, spheres and cylinders. I'll just give you a few examples. Statement number 33. This one talks about the area of a sphere. Let's take this as a sphere for example. This is the largest circle inside of the sphere, so at the very center of it. Just a straight circle. Surface area of a sphere equals 4 times the area of the largest circle inside of the sphere. Statement number 34. In this one, he drew a sphere inside of a cylinder. Tightly fit. From this, he discovered the volume of the cylinder equals 3 halves times the volume of the sphere. He also discovered that the surface area of the cylinder, including both ends, equals 3 halves the surface area of the sphere. This is perhaps the discovery that Archimedes felt proudest of. He dictated that his statement to be craved onto his gravestone. And in fact, the Roman invaders buried him according to his wish. But we'll get to his death later. Those were two of the simplest statements. The rest are quite complicated, and since I am in grade 7, I don't know what, the, uh, what most of the other ones mean. But I do understand that what Archimedes was trying to do, and what he tried to do most of the time, was find the area, and try finding the area and parameters of different types of irregular shapes. For example, acosahedrons, cubotahedrons, spirals, parabola, conoids, and spheroids. For two years, the genius of Archimedes repelled the Romans, enabling the city to survive the lengthy siege. He used many clever contraptions, as I mentioned before, such as the claw. But nevertheless, in 212 BC, the forces of Marcellus prevailed and took the city. Marcellus had great respect for Archimedes and immediately dispatched soldiers to retrieve his foe. Apparently, the great mathematician was unaware that his enemy had stormed the city, so deeply were his attentions focused on the mathematical problem. When a soldier demanded Archimedes accompany him to the quarters of Marcellus, he simply refused and continued his work. Then the enraged soldier flew upon Archimedes, striking the seventy-year-old dead. Marcellus was greatly distressed upon hearing the news of Archimedes' death, and ordered that he buried him with honors. Archimedes' tombstone was as he wished, engraved with the image of a sphere inside a cylinder, one of his geometrical trees, as I mentioned before. And so, that was the life of Archimedes. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoy, and... <laughs> That's all, folks.